when, when the Lord gave me this series about kingdom finances, kingdom money, I was excited about it because one of the things that hurts when you talk to people over the age of 55 is, hey, what did you want to do? What are you doing with your life? And they're just like, uh, well, what did you want to do? And then all of a sudden they, they, they perk up and they start talking about what they wanted to do. And then they're 60, they're 65. Well, well how come you didn't do it? Well, I never had the money. Well, what if we take all of the money out of the way today and then there's no more obstacles? Then we just got to deal with fear. Well, we already covered fear. We are already covered every other obstacle. But I want you to understand money should not be an option or of you doing what you want to do in your life. You know, it's so funny when you ask people, um, what would you want to do? What, what dreams do you have? What visions do you have? They always talk about it until it hits the money aspect. And then they always back up because they're, they're nervous about that. I want to take money completely out of your mindset today of why you can't do what the Lord has called you to do. Did you think that God gave you a dream and a purpose and then he said, I'm not going to give them the money to do it. It's just going to sit there and bother them for 63 years. No, 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 no. When he gave you a dream, he's going to provide. I've got some people that would not come to a series on money. And, you know, there's some people that they don't want to hear about money. They're the people that don't like to give tithes and offerings, and that's fine. 99.9% .9 of the time, when you talk to people, hey, man, would you pray for me about my money? Are you giving first fruits? Are you giving tithes and offerings? Well, well no, but I'm not talking about that. Let's, well, what are you talking about? You, you want me to pray against the Bible? You want me to pray against the Word of God? So this is what's happened. The Lord is taking me on a journey, and I'm still there. But I am getting to the place where I don't worry about money anymore. Two people said, yeah. Everybody else like, how in the world do you do that? You can get so free that you don't worry about money. So, so the next time, next time you need to fix something in your house or get a new house, or, or next time the Lord says, sow this much into this missionary, you're, you're like, well, well, Lord, I can't do that. No, no. If he tells you, you're going to be able to do it. Amen? Now, I'm, I'm going to tell you this. This message is going to get better as it goes. It's going to be a real teaching message. It, it's, and as we go, it's going to get better and better. And when I'm done, you're going to be like, oh, man, I wish you weren't stopping, but we're going to. So we're just going to start off talking about what the Lord has been speaking to me about money. And I have been studying this stuff out, and I'm super excited that some people will get free from this, free from this mindset. And, you know, the main reason people don't, don't give is greed and fear but but I want you to be like the Bible says a cheerful giver you know and this when you give we're going to take offering after after the, the service today I, I'm sorry I just had to get up here and, and start teaching this word now we're going to just start off in Hebrews 7 and I want to talk about this now I'm going to cover a lot of material and I'm not going to go into all of it why is that so you got to go study it at home yes at Roar Church you have homework so you got to go back and study if you want the rest of this it will be in a book. I prophesy within three months. Next week, my wife and Michelle will be preaching on this subject, and we're going to see where it goes from there. God is expounding. When you hear messages or when you do anything in your life, the Lord told me one day, I'm getting off for a second, but the Lord said, when you preach a message here, it's just not for here. Do you know how many people watch online? How many people watch on YouTube? And then make it into an e-course where you can teach people. Make it into a book where people can read it. The, you have to believe in yourself to the place that God will give you something and it will go further than what you see right now. You can no longer be limited to your natural eyesight. But you have to understand that there's something bigger. Now, in Hebrews 7, talk about Melchizedek. He was the king and the high priest during his time. And one day Abraham went out, d defeated some kings, and he was blessed. When Abraham was coming in with his money, Melchizedek came in and he brought to him 10%. He gave him 10%. People say, oh, tithing, that's in the law. Cool. This is 400 years before the law. So I'm, I'm going to go pre-law. And so he walked in and said, I'm going to give you 10%. Now, this is a long story. I'm just going to give you part of it. The, the neat thing about Melchizedek, the Bible says he was without mother or father, without a genealogy, without a beginning or an end of his life resembling the Son of God. And he remains as a priest forever. So what does that mean? 
it means that when he gave into him, he did not give into a time, a church, a building, a ministry, a nation. He gave into an eternity. He gave in, oh my goodness, this is, we're just starting off. He gave into everything. And then it goes on to say that when Abraham even gave into him, it was even like Levi was tithing. Hang on. Hang on. Wait a minute. Abraham had Isaac. Isaac had Jacob. Jacob had 12 sons, one of them being Levi. How in the world did he give? And it was as somebody three generations later even tithed into it because he was a minister three generations later. Are you hearing me? When you give to the works of God, when you give tithes and offering, you are giving into the generations. When I sow seed into Roar Church, I am sowing seed into my children and their children's children if the Lord tarries. Are you with me today? You got you to gotta think bigger with the things that the Lord is doing. You know, all throughout the Bible, the, God is always saying, build me a house. And when they build him a house, the people that build the house are usually older well, who receives from the house? Their children and their children's children. That's why the Bible says that a wise man leaves an inheritance for his children's children. If you're always worrying and thinking about you, you know, you got to get your mind off of yourself. You know, when I start thinking about, about the future and I save, we have our kids Roth IRAs. They're not big yet, but they will be in Jesus' name. But I'm teaching my kids how to invest in different things other than the here and now. Amen? Acts 10, it, it talks about a good man named Cornelius, not related to them, but maybe, who knows, but he was a centurion in the Italian regiment, and he and his family were known as devoted, God-fearing people, and they gave generously to the poor and the needy. And see, they were in the Italian regiment, but they would give to the Jewish people and help build them a temple. And now one day he was needing something, and this is what the angel of the Lord came down and said to him. He said, your prayers and your gifts and alms to the poor have become up as a memorial offering before God. A memorial offering before God in heaven was from what he gave. Let me ask you, do you have history with God? Do you have history with God? Do you remember those nights when you were down, you were broke, disgusted, had nothing, and you stayed up all night? You pulled a Jacob, and you came out. You came out as an Israel. You said, I am, it's bad, God. You've got to move. I'm going to spend all night with you. I'm going to grab a hold of you until you, I'm not going to, I'm going to walk with a limp when I leave, but I'm telling you, I'm going to get blessed. I'm going to get everything that you have for me. And you have to understand this right here. you got to have history with God. Matthew 7, verse 21. Not everyone who says, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Many say to him in that day, Lord, Lord, you have not prophesied. I have not prophesied in your name. We've cast out devils in your name. We've done many things. You know, the, the thing is, you say, how does that apply to money? Well, when people come to me with financial problems, I say, do you give tithes and offerings? Oh, yeah, I give tithes and offerings. Good. Show me your bank account. Well, I, I don't have any rec. I just give. Where do you give? Here, there, and yonder, East Texas version. And I'm saying, well, you're not giving into a storehouse. So how are you wanting to be blessed if you're not doing what the Word says? Hey, living a Christian life is, seriously, it's not hard. You read the Word, you study the Word, you apply the Word, it's really not hard. And when you understand that we hide under the shadow of the Almighty, we don't have as much to worry about as we were. The only time to worry is if the shadow's here and you step out from the shadow. When you're not under the shadow, then you worry. I would advise you to get yourself back in line under the shadow. Then you really don't have to worry about something. You know, there's times when you say, God, I have fasted, I have prayed, I've got seed in the ground. You can stand on that word. Amen? Okay, so I was mowing. I don't know what it is, but me and mowing, we have some good times. So the other day, I was getting ready to mow. And physically, I wasn't supposed to be able to do that. And then the mower has outlived its warranty by two years. You know, things break after the warranties. It's just a, I don't understand. It just, they know the date. So I was getting ready to mow, and, and I cranked it. And I was, you know how you, you kick a mower, and then you pull it at the same time? You ever do that? I wanna, you kick it, and you pull it at the same time? And it wouldn't work. And so finally, I got so frustrated. I went in the house. I came back. wouldn't start. went back in the house. And so when I came back out, 
I said, God, I'm going to use all the strength that I have. The doctor said, I don't need to be doing this, but I don't care. They only have a practice, and you are the master physician. So it wouldn't work. So I said, God, th- should I go buy a mower today? I'll go buy one right now and show this yard who's boss. And it was kind of like, you got seed in the ground. And I said, I do. I got some Bermuda. I got No, no, he said, no, no, you got seed in the ground. And I said, I got seed. What do I do? And the Lord said, this, this, and this. God's a mechanic. And so I, I got my hammer. My neighbor's looking at me crazy, y'all. I'm, I'm, I'm hitting on my mower, and I'm pushing in this, and something popped. Boom. Man, my yard looks good. And it worked. And, and the Lord was like, when you have seed in the ground, outlast the warranty. I don't know who that's making sense to today, but I could have went and bought a, a push mower for hundreds of dollars. But, but the Lord said, call upon everything that, that the seed that you have in the ground. Some people think, man, that's crazy. Will you go buy a new mower? You know, some people, you got to have moments with God and you got to have monuments with God. You've got to have those moments that when you stood and something looked like it would not happen. And you said, God, I am believing for this to happen. Genesis 26, you know, everything goes back to faith. So many people don't have faith to actually believe God will do what he's called us to do. He's going to do everything. And I'm going to stretch your faith. And I'm just here to tell you, in the days ahead, you are going to start living with crazy faith. Believing God to do everything he said he was going to do. Amen. Genesis 26, now there was a famine in the land. Okay, let me explain that. When there's a famine in the land, nothing grows, right? Besides the previous famine in Moses' time, I mean Abraham's time. So what I'm saying is is it was bad, y'all, but it was really bad back then, so it was double bad. And then it said, but Isaac planted crops in the land in the same year as the famine, and he reaped a hundredfold. Hold on. Double famine, hundredfold, doesn't work in the natural. What do you think all the famine people were looking around like? Nothing's growing. Abraham had a famine. This generation had a famine. And you got a hundredfold. How in the world did that happen? God. How did some of y'all get what you've got? God. Now, now wait a minute. What did we talk about a while ago? We talked about how Abraham tied to the Melchizedek and even three generations later was blessed. It was the same as three generations. See, whenever you give, the next generation is blessed. Abraham gave, therefore, Isaac was blessed when there was a famine in the land. Because, see, a father plants and his children will receive a harvest. I've seen so many. I remember this one time these these two young men came out of seminary. And one of them got out and he said, man, I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know anybody. I just got out of seminary. And he asked his friend, he said, well, what are you going to do? He said, dude, you know who my dad is? I can do anything I want to do. I got job offers at wherever I want to go because my dad's already set me up. See, in life, you can set your kids up. You know, some people, you're a first generation, whatever you are. But have you ever seen, I had a young man one time, he said, man, I said, what are you going to do with your life? He said, well, my dad's a vet, not an army vet, an animal vet. He said, my whole life, I've been hanging out with my dad. And my dad was like, hey, I'm getting a little older. Had you a little later in life, son. When you want to, I can step out and you just take over. And he's like, yeah. He didn't have to go start from scratch because daddy took care of him. You know, sometimes even with spiritual children, you got to find people that you can bless. It's not about you. And, and you got to quit thinking about th- there is no almighty dollar. There is an almighty God. And when you understand that, you'll quit worrying about money. And so it says that, that Isaac reaped a hundredfold in the middle of a famine that, that was right after another famine because he was blessed. And it says then he became a rich man and wealth continued to grow until he became very, very wealthy. When you become very, very wealthy, you know what that means you can do? In the natural, you can do whatever you want. You know, I've seen missionaries get online and say, hey, I have an urgent need. Can can somebody do this, 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 or this? And I'm thinking, man, if I had such wealth, I could just pay for their endeavor, pay for their next endeavor, 
tell them to stay on the mission field for a month. You know, some missionaries have to come home for eight months out of the year. And they said, Joe, I feel like I'm begging for money. And I said, man, I wish I could just send a missionary for one year and say, don't come home. Everything is, is met. Every need you have is met. Everything that you need, I, I can meet it financially. Now, you know, I said this last week, but Jewish people take up 4% of the world's population and they own a little over 40% of the economy. One thing that a lot of Jewish people say to do is have about seven streams of income. Then you go to Ecclesiastes 11 and 2. It says, invest in seven ventures. Yes, even into eight. You do not know what disaster may come upon the land. So let me give you a side note real quick. Do you know what silver and the stock market have in common? Absolutely nothing. See, I invest in IRAs and I invest in silver. But the main thing I invest in is the kingdom of God. But whenever the stock market's up... Silver's low. I'm talking like low, low. But then when silver's up, the stock market's down. So which one do you invest in? And when, when do you sell? See, some people, all they do is go to work and get a paycheck, and that's all they got. No, no, no. You, you got to be wise. It's just like the parable of the talents. The one that did the most, God blessed, he have more. You got to be good. First thing, this is practical stuff. Then we're going to get into the message. Number one, it says in Luke 14, 28. But for which of you indeed builds a tower that does not sit down and first count the cost, whether you have enough to finish it? The second thing is Proverbs 22, 7. You got to get out of debt. The rich rule over the poor. And I am tired of worldly people ruling over believers. We should be the one financing things. We should be the ones that when people need something, we help them finance. Because the wealth has been ours. We've mismanaged what the Lord gave us. And then worldly people come in and grasp up principles, godly principles, godly or not. If you walk in the principle, I know worldly people who tithe. I remember this dude, he would mail his check in to church. One time I said, dude, why are you mailing your church in? He said, because I've been hanging out all Saturday night. I, I, don't, I don't wake up for church. But mama told me about tithing and offering, and I'm going to give. And he said, it's just a principle. You know, can, I'm just going to stay off for a second. It, it, I've been doing a lot of studies. Why Jewish people have, have knowledge and they have wealth, okay? Well, well, think about this. You know, when Jesus, when he went in, First of all, in Jesus' time, if you wanted to be a rabbi, you were chosen by the age of 12 or 15 by a rabbi. If you were not chosen by a rabbi to work in the temple and the synagogues, you had to go into your father's trade, correct? So when Jesus found his first four disciples, what were they doing? Fishing. Why? Because they'd been overlooked and they were already learning a trade. At what age? 13, 14, 15. 15. You got some people that are 25, 30. I don't know what I'm going to do with my life. In the Bible times, if you were a rabbi and you were 30, you already been in your trade for 18 years. By the time you were 30, you were a professional. See, in that culture, everybody is known for something. What are you? I'm a rabbi. What are you? I'm a school teacher. What are you? I'm a plumber. What are you? I'm a this. I'm a that. And most people do one thing, and they are an expert in it. I had a man tell me one time, he said, Joe, I'm a plumber by trade. God called me into ministry. But the Lord said, work hard when you're young and your trade will take care of everything you ever need. He said, I became an expert in my field. One of my life mentors told me, he said, Joe, the number one thing you can ever be in your life is an expert in your field and it will take care of everything. He said, the Lord won't, will bless you in everything that you do. And what happens a lot of times is we bounce around and, and we don't get grounded in anything. Is that making sense? That's some natural stuff. Now, here's what we're going to do. We're, we're, we're going to talk about first fruits. If I told you, is there anything better than the tithe when it comes to money? Most people say, oh, no, it's just tithes and offering. I'm going to teach you today there's something better than tithes. It's called first fruits. You know, a lot of people say this, oh, God, I want you more than anything. You are my everything. That's good. But let, let me miss your checkbook. John Maxwell says this. My wife told me this yesterday. John Maxwell says... He says, I can hang out with you for one day and I can tell if you're successful. I can hang out with somebody for five minutes and I can tell you if they're going to be successful or not. And it's in your daily routine of what you do. It's how you get up in the morning. It's, it's, you know, people say, man, I'm, I'm struggling. You know, are you tithing? Are you giving offerings? How's your prayer life? Are you fasting? Are you seeking the Lord? And, you know, it's real simple. Basic steps is what gets you further in life. Amen. 
God can't be second. And, and the Bible says he is a jealous God because mm, he loves him some you. I'm telling you, he loves you and he's jealous. And he don't want any person or, or money or any material thing in front of him because he's God. Yeah. So John 16, 33, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. And in the world you're going to have trouble. He said this, have peace in me, but in this world you will have trouble. But take heart, I've overcome the world. So the word says that we're going to have some trouble. But when you are aligned with God, you're going to get through it just fine. You know, some of the greatest testimonies that I have is not about me doing ministry. People said, Joe, I saw you go through a hard time and you just smiling. I'm kind, of like in a, I'm kind of like waving at people, you know, like in a parade, just waving. I was going through a hard time, but I was aligned with God properly. I was aligned, and, in, in, you know, you can stay in the place of prayer. Then when you come out of the prayer room, you know you're going through a hard time. You know you're going through a physical infirmity. You know you're going through something, people coming against you, but you can get through it with God. God, I got seed in the ground, and I don't care what's going on around me. I'm going to have a harvest. I'm going to be like Isaac. There is famine everywhere. Even the dust has dust. The dirt, there's nothing growing, not even a weed y'all not even a weed but over there in Goshen the children of Israel were blessed and everybody the Egyptians were looking at all the Israelites in Goshen and saying how in the world are you so blessed because we give first fruits tithes and offering now let's get into first fruits Exodus 13 it says then the Lord spoke to Moses saying consecrate to me all of the firstborn whatever opens up the womb amongst the children of Israel both man and beast it is mine the word consecrated means dedicated or set apart now let me explain that in the Bible Hannah was married to Elkanah which is married to Peniah now Peniah she's having kids like just one right after another Hannah's sitting over here she's not having any kids and, and she was like, God, I will, people don't understand this. She said, if you give me a man child, I will give him back to you. That makes sense now? She said, I will give you my firstborn as first fruits offering to the temple. So when she had her first son, Samuel, the prophet, she gave him to the temple. You know, the Bible says she had five more kids, three sons and two daughters. She couldn't have any, but, but because of her first fruits offering, her womb was opened up. Some of your businesses that's down inside of you, if you would give a first fruits offering, it would be opened up. Now, this is a, a neat story. And the other morning, I woke up and the Lord said, give this amount of money every Monday for the rest of the year. And I said, okay. And then I said, why that, that amount of money, Lord? That seems like a lot of money to give every single week. And the Lord said, how much did you declare at the first of the year that you needed to make? I named it. How much does your wife need to make? I named it. God said, add it up and see what 10% of it is. I added it up. It was exactly what I said I needed this year. And it, it just hit me. And I mean, it's one of those, huh, what would you say, Lord? One of those moments. Exactly what I prayed and said we needed personally, he is so smart, he divided it by 52, by 10%, and that's exactly the amount that he told me to give. And I was like, wow. Now, let me ask you. When we do the offering in a minute, and two people sitting by each other put a check into the bucket. Who's tithing and who's giving first fruits? The tithe is you worked all week, and at the end of the week, you get your 10% and you drop it in. That's tithes. First fruits is you tithe, you give on what you're going to make. Huge difference. You give into the future of what is coming. Tithing, the way most people do it, is in past tense. Now, God, thank you for, you've already blessed me, so now I'm going to be able to give to you. First fruits is giving before he blesses you. A little difference, isn't it? Okay. Hey, this is all new to me. I've been listening. I'm like, Lord, this is, this is some good stuff. So Exodus 13, it says, And it shall be when the Lord brings you into the land of the Canaanites, as he swore to you that he would by your fathers, and he would give this to you, that you shall be set apart from the Lord and would open up the womb, and every firstborn that comes from every animal is the Lord's. Listen to this. 
But every firstborn of the donkey you shall redeem with a lamb. Now, this is where it gets good. And if you do not redeem it, then you shall break its neck. Now, you got to understand this. And I've seen this all of my life, and God revealed this to me. If you don't give God his 10%, he's going to get it anyway. I remember sitting in my dad's cattle auction, and this old guy, I'm, a, I'm just going to tell you, he was not a believer. He said the word God a lot, but you know. And he was just, he said, you know what's weird? I feel like one out of every 10 cattle I buy dies automatically. And I, I'm a little boy sitting there, and it just resonated with me. You got to understand this. If you don't give it to God, it will be taken away. Because the word even says numerous times, the gold and the silver is mine, says the Lord. We, we can't hang on to things. And, and here is what you must understand. For years, I've worked in numerous churches. And the same people, over and over, they struggle, they struggle, they struggle. And you know how many bathroom breaks are taken during offering? You can't even get in there, y'all. Do you know how many people come in after the, 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 the tithes and offering? I remember one time I was working at a church. I wasn't the speaker, so I was outside. I'm like, guys, we got a traffic jam in the hall. And all of a sudden, when the tithes and offerings over, people go, why do you not want to give to God? I mean, why in the world would you not? I try to find places to sow seed. I find place to put seed in the ground. Man. Now, you know, this is the, this is the illustration of, of first fruits again. Let's say I'm a, I'm a, my dad's a cattle farmer, so you had 10 cows that were pregnant. And then all the, the 10 cows had their babies, and then at the end of it, this is where the flesh gets you. You're looking at, at your 10 calves, which one you want to give, okay? You give one, that's your tithes. Now, first fruits is when the first calf is born, you would sacrifice that calf. Old Testament, you would give that calf. Then you would have faith that the other nine were good. You know the scripture in the Bible where it says, would you give a lame sacrifice to the governor? You know, you think about that, but you know what that really is? Farmer, my dad's Joe, Farmer Joe is out there and he's got 10 calves and he picks up the lame one. He, is he giving 10%? Yes. And he gives it. Was it with the woman's on neck crook, you know, kind of limping? Yeah. Was it sick? Yeah. But he gave 10%, didn't he? But did he give first fruits? That's what you got to understand. First fruits is so much different. And as I was studying this, this is so good. As I was studying this, the Lord said, I want you to start doing it starting tomorrow. I will give what, what I really believe we need and what I prayed for this year for us to do what we need to do. I'm going to start giving into that. So do you tithe on what you make or what you want to make? I can't tell you, what did he say? I'll repeat it. You know, do you tithe on what you make or what you want to make? I've heard more people say, when I started tithing on what I wanted to make, that is what I make. Now, we can prophesy, I got a word for you, and we can prophesy the word of the Lord. But when it comes to money, people back up. I mean, only 17% of y'all looking at me like I'm crazy right now. <laughs> but I'm telling you, I... You, like I said, I've talked to more people, people in my family, people that I love all their life. They've been dreamers, but oh, there's no way I could ever afford to do that. I'll just get a, I'll just do this and I'll just do that. No, no, why don't you just do what he said you were going to do? You know, my whole life, I've stepped out and taken 412 big chances and he's came through on 413 of them. You know, because he, all, when he tells me to do something, I do it. I just, see, I prophesied a number and I will step out and this is a thing between you and God. So whenever the first calf was born, they would give the first calf. Amen. Let me explain it to you like this. I never understood this. Genesis 14. Now, Adam knew Eve, his wife. I need to explain that. Okay. Okay. He, he knew Eve, his wife. He's like, hey, Eve, how you doing? That's not what I meant. Okay. And she conceived and bore Cain and said, I have acquired a man from the Lord. And then she had, she, they knew each other again. How you doing again? They knew each other a second time. And then they had Abel. You know the story about Cain and Abel? Okay, now this is where it gets good. And then at the time, Cain brought an offering of fruit of the ground to the Lord. Abel also brought the firstborn of his flock and of the fat. The Lord respected Abel's offering, but not Cain. 
See, when I first thought that, I thought maybe, maybe the Lord's like me. He really likes meat, but not vegetables as much, you know, or, or something like that. But no, Abel brought his firstborn, which was his first fruit. But Cain didn't. Cain brought an offering. It didn't say tithes. He just brought an offering to the Lord. There's so many people that you've been offering yourself to death, but you still never given tithes. You know, the, the Bible says, well, I'll get, that, I'm get ahead of myself. I get excited when I read the Word of God. But, you know, the Bible, it talks about bringing tithes into the storehouse, but giving of offerings. Huge difference. Please do a deep study on, on, on this. There is a big difference. You can't designate your tithes. You can designate your offering. So many people, they say they're struggling financially, but, man, I give. How much do you give? I had a guy say, I give 30%. Where do you give? Oh, here and there and somewhere over the rainbow and all this. I said, have you ever give? Do you do tithes? Well, I, I give. The Bible says tithes and offerings. And, you know, and, and this is where a lot of people miss. And there was, there, there's times I see people who are prosperous in life, and I say, why are you blessed? Why? You know, and people that, that give, it's just like they're, they're, everything is better. Health, life, things. You need to align yourself with what the Lord says. Over the past few weeks, I want to give properly, get rid of all fear, and get rid of all insecurities over your life and get ready for what God has for you. Man, none of those things, you can't hang on to any of those things. Malachi 3.10, it says, bring the whole tithes into the storehouse. It's funny, it said the whole tithes, that means you know, tithe is 10%. It's not a biblical term, it's just 10%. That there may be food in my house. And then the Lord said, test me in this, says the Lord. And I'm like, "Woo!" he says, test me in this. And it's like God says, trust me on this. And if you do it, I got a blessing. Then it goes on to say, and I see, will you not see that I will throw open the windows and the floodgates of heaven? It says throw open. This is what the Lord said. You bring the whole tithes, 10%. He says, test me in this and I will throw open the windows of heaven. And I'm thinking, Lord, how in the world? There's been times in my life. Now, I don't know if you ever did this, but I would be like, okay, uh, okay here's my tithe. Here's my bills. We're going to put the tithe check towards the back. i get you next week, God. Just, just I'll get you next week. You know, I don't know if you've ever done that. But now what the Lord has told me to do is when I put out our bills, I write out our, our tithes and our offerings, and, and I do it like four to six weeks in advance. And every bill goes behind it. It's the first one. Now there's times I've held bills back and put that first because it's the first fruits. And we're not missing anything. You know, because when you live, see, I would rather have 90% redeemed than 100% cursed. Amen. This is good stuff right here. You know, we talked about Abraham and, and I mean Adam and he talked about his sons, Cain and, and Abel. Abel killed the fatted calf well what did the prodigal when the prodigal son came home what did dad say go go kill the the the, the broken down lame calf the one that's got a, a little hitch in his get along no he said i want want you to do come on up here and go get the best one get the show calf get that limousine yeah go get that limousine calf up here bring him on get that get that big angus right there and we're going to kill the fatted calf and that's what he did he gave the best God can't receive second place or second-hand offering. It says in Leviticus 27, 30, And all the tithe of the land, whether it's seed of the land or fruit of the tree, is the Lord's, and it is holy to the Lord and set apart, consecrated. So what does that mean? Don't touch the 10%. It's God's. It's, it's God's. And, and honestly, I never really understood it till I did this study. I would be scared to touch that. I was listening to one minister and he said, my wife and I, over the years, he was older, he was in his 60s, he said, have got to the place where we give our first fruits on January 1st. And he said what he gave, and I said, you, you, <laughs> whoa, whoa, belief system is up, you know, because he believes what the, what the Lord is going to do. Now, years ago, the Lord told me this, and I'm just now getting a full revelation of it. So, side note, when God gives you a word and you don't understand it, don't worry about it. It'll, it'll mature. But the Lord said, if you will build my house, I will always build your house. And if you take care of my house, I will always take care of your house. And I'm like, okay, Lord, thank you. Don't know what that fully means, but I got it. And now I'm understanding. I always want to take care of what 
the Lord is doing. My dad used to always tell me when I was young, he said, son, you do right by God and you do right by, by, by everybody you're around and God's going to take care of you and people are going to take care of you. He said, always do what's right. And I know that sounds simple, but I always want to do right by the things of the Lord. Matthew 25, I'm not going to go into this, but it, it, it talks about the man over an earthly kingdom. And he told his servants, he gave them different talents and stuff. And he gave one five talents and he was good with, with that money. And then he came back, he had 10. He gave one two talents or you know a certain amount of money and he came back and it was doubled. Then he gave it to one and he didn't do anything with it. What are you doing with the little bit that God has given you? What are you doing with that little bit of seed that God gave you? It might be one seed. You know, one apple seed is about that big. But one apple seed can produce over 144,000 apples in its lifetime. Your little seed that you may give sometimes an offering somewhere, you know, it, it doesn't really, it doesn't matter in our mind, oh, it's just, it's just 50 bucks, it's 100 bucks. That's why I love sowing into people, because you have no idea what that one seed can actually produce. Amen? Second Kings, I love this story. Elisha, the, the man of God, and Gehazi, his assistant, were going around, and there was a lady, and her and her family was wealthy, and they said, you're always passing through this area. I want to build you an apartment. And they said, well, well, thank you. Why would you do that? I want to bless the man of God. So she blessed the man of God. Then the man of God said, what is in your heart? And then she said, well, the thing in my heart is to have a son. And then she was able to produce a son. Her building that was a first fruits offering. There's a difference in first fruits. You have to understand. It's almost like you're prophesying with what you want. And then it said, please let us make a small upper room up on the wall for you. And she took care of the man that was presenting the word of the Lord in that day. Because in those days, they didn't have cars. They walked from place to place, back and forth. And people would be kind enough to take care of them and supply those needs. And so she took care of the man of God and what God wanted. What I'm telling you is you build God a house and you take care of God's house, he will take care of your house. And, and so many times, this is so elementary, but when I talk to people and things are wrong in their life on so many situations, they'll be talking about a prodigal child. I'll be like, are you doing tithes and offerings and first fruits? No. Well, well, can we go back to the basics? Well, no, no, we're not talking about that. We're talking about this situation. Well, I don't want to talk about the, the, the fourth floor of an apartment building if the foundation's cracked. The, the bottom is the problem. Where is your, are you reading and praying? It all goes back to reading and praying and, and fasting and seeking the Lord. And so this lady took care and didn't ask for anything, but the Lord blessed her. You know, in Haggai 1 and 2, this was, a, this was in the land of Judah. But what these people were doing is these, they were having money sent into the land of Judah to actually build a temple. As they were building this, this temple, the people around them started getting nervous because somebody was building a new house for the Lord. And so what happened is as the money would come into Judah they would get it and they started building their own house. And so the word of the Lord from Haggai the prophet came in and said, look, why are you paneling up your own houses? Why are you adorning your own houses? Why are you making your own houses nicer, but the house of God lays in ruins? So what happened is in chapter 2, the people repented of it. And, and then this is what, you know, the Lord came back and said to them, you know, everything, all of their vines dried up and everything quit, quit prospering. But, but the Lord is so good. And Haggai 2 and 8, he says, the silver is mine and the gold is mine, says the Lord of hosts. He is letting them know that everything is his. In, in verse about 19, this is so good. He says, as yet the vine and the fig tree and the pomegranate and the olive tree have not yet yielded any fruit. But from this day forward, it will start bearing fruit. Why? Because they decided to impact the house of God. You know, Acts 20 and 35, it says, Remember the words of our Lord Jesus that he says, It is more blessed to give than to receive. And if you think this whole message is about money, I think you've missed the whole point of the thing. It is about giving to the Lord. And just like I said earlier, I have learned the power of first fruits. I'm never going to tithe on what I make. I'm going to give before I even make it. I'm going, to, I'm going to, by giving, even prophesy to the future of my life and for my family. Psalms 112 and 3, let wealth and riches be in my house because I am a giver. And the Bible says that, you know, that the Lord loves a cheerful giver. 
I don't know about y'all, but back in the day, I used to hate tithes. And I did slip out to the bathroom a few times. I'll just tell you the truth. But I did not like giving. I would, I'd be like, man, God, you know what I could do with this, this money? And, and then one day it just hit me. It was like a cheerful giver. And so I like giving. I like giving now. I like sowing. And what it is, he says, Lord, I trust you with this because you can do more w- with this than I can do more with it. Proverbs 3 Honor the Lord with your possessions and with the first fruits of all your increase. So your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will overflow with new wine. Honor the Lord with your possession and with your first fruits. You know, I've never even heard this message in a church before in my life. And, you know, whenever we got ready to start this church nine months ago, people said, oh, don't talk about money. People in these texts don't like you talking about money. I said, well, every place I've gone, the majority of the people in churches struggle. I don't want anybody here struggling. I, I, I want us to be givers. My wife said the other day, she said, you know, we drive by banks and you see all these, these people just, they're the lenders. Why, why can't we be lenders? Well, why can't we be able to take care of people? Why can't we be the ones? So many people looking for, for welfare. So many people, when people get older, they're trying to get all these programs to help them. You know, well, what if we were at the place where we could take care of people? Well, what if we got our mind off of ourself and, and just really focused in on the things of the Lord? It says in Luke 6, 38, Give and it will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over will be put into your bosom. For that with the same measure that you use, it will be measured back to you. Last point. With the same measure that you use, it will be measured back to you. What about if you can determine your blessing? What if you determine the measure? It's all about seed time and harvest. Genesis 8, while... The earth remains, seed time and harvest, cold and hot, winter and summer, and day and night. Whenever you sow, you sow like whenever you need, like let's say that you need a financial blessing. You don't say, hey, God, I'm putting $500 in my kingdom bank account. I need the $500 back. No, no, you sow. You sow, and there's times that I've stood up on my physical health, and I said, God, I got seed in the ground, and I have moments with you and monuments in heaven because of my prayers. Lord, I need a financial miracle. I've got seed in the ground, and I declare, God, I have given. I have been faithful in everything you've asked me to do, and he always comes true and through for me every time. He's never let me down. Now, it's not always quite as, I'm like, our Lord, like, mm, like now, and he's like, I'll get you in a minute. He always, right, right on time, right on his time. Not our time, but right on his time. You know, you don't sow when you need it. You plan ahead. And if you think you're just sowing for yourself, you're selfish. Those kids back there in kids' church, those little ones in the nursery, and even like Abraham sowed for Levi, the, the Bible says, and he was still even in his ancestors, which means he was 150 years from being born it was the same as he was given because there was a lineage of people that were blessed. You know, my family, now my parents have always been givers. Autumn's parents have been givers. And we're going to step it up. My family is going to be blessed. I, I'm going to have moments and monuments in heaven with God and because they're going to know in heaven and on earth that I am a giver because I want to be somebody who gives. Amen. So first fruits, pray about that. See what the Lord speaks to you about that. But it was so cool. This story is so nice. I'm going to say it twice. When God gave me the amount to give every Monday, it was the exact amount that I said I needed to make. In my, we work for ourselves in ministry and in business. We work for ourselves and what we needed to make. What he told me to give times 52 is the exact amount that I wrote down that we needed to pray for. You don't think he listens to you, that he can speak to you to the very penny of what you were talking about. But when you dedicate yourself to the things of God, he will dedicate. And this is the thing. God doesn't bargain with you. And, and I tell people all the time, being a Christian is easy. It is simple. And you don't worry. You don't fret. Because when you do what the word of God says, you know what the Bible says people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge? Because they don't know the word. If the most Bible you get is me talking to you on Sunday mornings, you've missed it, man. you got to get it on Monday and Tuesday, three, two times on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Just, just get in the Word, get in a Bible study, get, get in a group where you get the Word of God. Understand the Word and what the Lord says. Wherever you're weak, aggressively go after those areas in the Word of God. Amen. 
Here's what we're going to do. We're going to take up uh, first fruits, tithes, and offering right now, and then we're going to go into prayer. This is what I felt before service. I just felt like today was going to be a, a prayer of breakthrough. I had a, a, a breakthrough yesterday, a physical breakthrough that I've been needing for five months. And I really believe that some people are about to get their breakthrough. You know, what's neat is after every service er, during the week, I always hear of a few different people give me a testimony. Hey, I got a revelation from the Lord. Hey, I got um, a breakthrough this week. The person we prayed for, they got healed. The person we prayed for, they gave their life to the Lord. People are always getting breakthroughs. And this is what we're needing. Now, but before, before we take offering and, and before we pray, this is what, what I want to say. One of the main reasons I felt so strong about today's message is because some of you are still setting on old dreams for the number one reason. Well, I can't do it because of the lack of finances. Never let it be said of you that you held God's hand back because you wouldn't be faithful to what he told you to do. It's time. You got to step out financially. You got to step out mentally. You, you, you got to step out. There, over the last year, I've seen so many people step out of what they were doing to step into something. Some of you are going to step up in your company at a higher degree. This is your time. Never let fear and you being greedy hold you back from what God has called you to. You know, there's some of you. You know, you give tithes into the storehouse, but offerings. Let me ask you, where do you give? My wife and I, we give each month to a ministry in Colorado, a ministry in, in um, Alabama. We give. We give. Where do you give? Get, learn to be a giver of what God gives you. Learn to sow into other places. Sow into other ministries that you're not even a part of. Find a, a ministry that you support, that you believe in, and give into them. Be a giver.